Joining me now, public relations expert Mike Paul, the reputation doctor also with us, entertainment attorney Dominic Romano, and Angela Red Doc Wright, uh, employment attorney and mediator. Thanks, uh, all three of you, for being with me. Angela, I want to start with you. Um, we have this lawsuit now. Uh, can they actually prove, Angela, uh, that the person who was in that costume was, in fact, racist? That's a great question. So in the in the concept of employment discrimination and racism, there are two ways to prove racism. There's either through direct evidence, um, i.e. someone says something that's racist, does something that's clearly racist, or there's indirect evidence or what might we might call implicit bias. And so I think this would fall into the second part of that analysis of whether there is um, it was an indirect effort to ignore those young girls um, at the risk of engaging with other young people that were not of color at that park. And what it may not have been intentional, but the question is, based on how we are wired in society, did the person behind that mask, behind that costume, possibly have some type of implicit bias that carried over in terms of the way that the costume, the person behind the costume engaged with those young girls? I'm curious, Angela, what do you think? I mean, you've seen the videos. What what do you take away? Yeah, um, I mean, when you look at it at first blush, um, what I see is him wave, actually looking at the young girls and then waving them off. And I understand that the park has responded saying, no, no, he was responding to another family or that perhaps he was trying to get them off the yellow line because it was dangerous. But I think when you look at it closely, it just, it reeks of, you know, possible shunning those young girls off, whether it was because of their race or another reason. Perhaps the, cost, the person in costume was just tired or thirsty or frustrated or what have you. But definitely what I see is him looking directly at those young ladies and shunning them off with his hand. Mike, you are in crisis management. That's what you do. Um, how do you think Sesame Place ha has done handling all of this? Because they've, they've been in the headlines for days now. Well, I, I want to clarify something because it's one of the videos that's missing. So let's make sure that everyone at home understands where we're at. The video that you showed was from the very first instance that made it to TV. However, the video that surfaced today was from an incident that happened on Father's Day, which I believe was June 18th. And that's now tied to a class action lawsuit seeking $25 million and more. Um, that video showed a young girl by the name of Kennedy, uh, who is age five, by the way. I've got a son that's age five. And, uh, you know, I felt her pain when I saw the video. Uh, it appears to be, the allegation is that it was tied to racism, and it appears to be so. But what, the, what we need to understand here is there's now two videos of two separate incidents that have allegations claiming very similar things, that the characters at Sesame Place avoided hugging or high-fiving or coming in contact with little black girls thus far, which is a horrible, horrible yeah. thing if that's true. Um, yeah, I it's believe, an interesting point you make that, yeah, if it's more than just one incident, right. Sorry, go ahead. Now to, to answer your question, there's also two brands that are now involved with this. Everyone has Sesame Street or the Sesame Workshop or Sesame Place as a brand that's in their mind tied to those characters. However, Sesame Place has as its licensee and parent the SeaWorld Entertainment Organization that runs the SeaWorld theme parks as a partner for this particular venture that's tied to the Sesame Street brand, which is called Sesame Place, and this one is located in Philadelphia. Now, why does that become important? You've got federal law you have to deal with. You have state law that you have to deal with. You have a community within the Philadelphia region that obviously has dealt with a lot of racist situations before, and we now have a class action lawsuit that's saying not only these two incidents, but the attorneys are saying anyone else who has a video, anyone else who's experienced this, going back to 2018, please contact us. So if they're my client, the corporation, yeah. I'm very concerned. 
I'm saying, yeah, what are the chances yeah. that there is another video? What are the chances? I can tell you already. Well, we're going to see. Yeah, I mean, really I mean well, well, now that it's, yeah, now that it's out there, certainly if there are more videos, I'm sure people will start coming forward. But based on what Mike said, Dominic, legally speaking, if it turns out that they can prove that this was racist, you, you heard Mike talking about the parent organizations and there's all these different facets to it. Who would, who would ultimately be held responsible? Would it be the organizations? Would it be the person in the suit? Would it be both? Potentially, yeah. I think I think he's absolutely right. If you look at even the Burns action, Quentin Burns and his uh, daughter Kennedy, they are alleging that the, the daughter was snubbed by four different characters. It's just not not just a one-off. Elmo, Ernie, Telemonster, and Abby Gadabi. And that's separate and apart from the viral video, which is the Brown video. So there are, there are here multiple allegations, multiple children. This is not a good look for Sesame Place. Angela, what do you and, make and, of the 25 million? Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. What, what were you going to say? I just wanted to make sure we, we clarified and gave a full answer to your question. You wanted to know who is responsible. SeaWorld Entertainment, the theme park organization, that's the parent company, Sesame Place, and the four individuals for that class action lawsuit are John Doe's one, two, three, and four. But the heavy dollars are from the parent company, SeaWorld. And as we know, SeaWorld has its own brand and has had its own problems in the past. And now we have the yeah, Sesame they, Street, they certainly Sesame have. Workshop, and Sesame Place brand. The two of them are both in crisis. That's right. If proven, and you say heavy, heavy, heavy dollars. 20, 20, 20, I want to get Angela in here, though. $25 million um, is, is what they, they've said in the lawsuit. What do you make of that number? How do they come up with that? Right. I think our my fellow the fellow guests kind of made a good point that if you're only looking at it as an isolated incident with the two little girls that were most recently in the news, then $25 million may seem somewhat excessive. But when you look at it in the conglomerate and all of the, uh, the current plaintiffs that are out there and the potential plaintiffs that could come forward, then a number starting at that amount makes sense. Um, and it's not for, you know, they're obviously not employees of the park, but it's for emotional distress. And so I imagine the argument is that these two young girls and the other young girls and others that may come forward at such a young age that they could be so traumatized that this would carry with them for the rest of their lives and so that there's irreparable harm and so the damages have to be high in order to get SeaWorld, in order to get Sesame Place to do the right things for these young girls and for kids in the future. Agreed. They come to that number. Yeah, I just want to bring up, I, I just, Dominic, I want to ask you about something. I, I was just, yeah. while she was answering, I was thinking about what our previous guest said, and, and you guys were listening. Um, he, was, he was a character. He did this job for a long time. I mean, he, he was really serious that it's, it's hard to see out of those costumes. Is it possible, Dominic, that this, this person working in this suit is, is not racist and, uh, you know, just, just didn't have good vision out the sides? Look, it's possible, but in the balance of probability, SeaWorld is going to have to overcome the fact that there are multiple characters here. It wasn't just one or two people, according to the allegations, and it's multiple children. And they're seeking compensatory, actual, punitive, statutory damages and interest. That's how they get to $25 million. And the opposing view is yes. it's the character's job to get down on his knees or her knees and have an experience for that child because the contract is tied to that ticket and it's their job. I'm, I'm speaking directly as though SeaWorld is my client. That excuse isn't going to fly. You better come up with something better than yeah, that. And look, the job description and look, it, it, is to get down sorry, on your we're, knees, we're just, we're, get down to that height and make sure you have an experience for those children because that's what the ticket buys. That's proper training. Yeah, and if I hear you. And, and look, I think everyone... <laughs> Sorry, we're we're running out of time here, but I, I think everyone can agree. You know, no one no one likes to see the look on those kids' uh, faces. But it's it's also very interesting to hear from the gentleman who, who's done the job before that you know it, you can't see very well out of the costumes. And I think if we haven't done the job, it is hard to to really say what it's like. But it was a fascinating conversation, uh, Mike, Dominic, and Angela. Thank you all so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.